I'm Dr. Chris. And he's Dr. Chris. And he's Dr. Zahn. And we're here today to answer some of your medical questions that you very kindly sent in. Why do your armpits smell? Jade has written that in. My armpits don't smell. Why would, why would you ask that? Why would, why would Jade even mention that? I mean, I, I mean, that does I haven't smell. had time to have a shower this morning, <laughs> but I don't see... Um, Dr. Zahn's armpits smell because he has been through puberty. And when you go through puberty, the sweat glands in your armpits change and they start secreting, as well as salty water, some other things that the bacteria in your armpits can live on. So the smell is partly you, it's partly the chemicals that come out of your armpits, and it's partly the waste products from the bacteria eating stuff in your sweat. Bacteria poo, basically. Zand, what are pins and needles? Mauve Posh Satsuma wants to know what pins and needles are. They are small pieces of metal that I would use for sewing or maybe attaching. A I think piece we of all paper to we all board. knew you were going to do that. Can you explain what paresthesia is, neural paresthesia? Because that is what she actually wants to know the answer to. Of course, I can explain that. I'm a doctor, fully qualified, paid up, signed up doctor. <coughs> so, medical pins and needles. What is it? When you um, when your leg goes, so you cross your legs. Okay, that presses on the nerve in your leg. Okay and the nerve doesn't get enough blood and it kind of goes to sleep. And when you uncross your legs, gradually blood flows back to that nerve and it starts waking up. But as it wakes up, it gets confused and starts selling, sending odd messages back to your brain. And that's what you feel as pins and needles, like thousands of little pins and needles all over your leg. It's basically your nerve getting confused as it wakes up again. And the important thing about pins and needles is that although you might feel them in your foot, the actual bit of nerve compression that is going on is up in your knee but your brain thinks the messages are coming from your foot because they're going along the same nerve. Why does your hair turn grey? Why would you bring that up? I mean, my hair isn't going grey. Even his beard's going grey. Look at that. When you're young, it's very important to have coloured hair because it's rather like having a peacock having a beautifully coloured tail. It makes you attractive to other people. And as you get older, that becomes a bit less important. So your hair stops working properly and it goes grey. I think it's probably right that it is accumulated damage in your hair follicle, but it does have some signalling things as well. Uh, next question, Emerald Zany Cat. Why are yawns contagious? The thing about yawns is that they are actually quite boring. They are boring. And the yeah. reason, the question is an interesting one because they are contagious, but absolutely no one knows why. People will tell you it's to do with brain cooling, it's to do with oxygen, it's to do with waking you up. Absolutely no one knows. Azure Pizza Swan, very strange name, wants to know why the palm of your hand is always white. If you're a mechanic or a coal miner, I think it's improbable it would be always white. Maybe if you were very delicate. It would almost never be white. Maybe if you didn't mend any cars or you mended very clean cars. Maybe, if you could, or if you furiously washed your hand. But no, I, I think it would, that would never always be white. But in general, like my palm, my palm, that is true, because I have been on holiday and I have a tan on the top of my hand and I don't have one on the bottom of my hand. And your, the palm of your hand almost never sees the sun, so it doesn't need pigment to protect it from sunlight, whereas the top of your hand almost always sees the sun. Sepia bass hamster, why do we get goosebumps and how do they get their roundness? They're called goosebumps because it looks like when you pluck feathers out of a, out of a chicken to eat it and, and you get or the bumps on the skin or a goose. Why wouldn't you say I goose? I don't know. They're not I called chicken. Because you don't eat goose. goose. You when did you last eat a goose? <laughs> you don't ever eat goose. I had a feast of goose Zan last night. Sitting down to his goose for breakfast. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. But the reason is, have you got goosebumps at the moment? No. Let's see your arm, show your arm. All your hairs at the bottom of there have a tiny, tiny, tiny muscle attached to their base. And when you get cold, it, that, um, that muscle contracts and puts the hair up and that traps a layer of warm skin next to you. And it warm can also air. happen warm air, warm air next to you. So, uh, so it's very useful if you're a very furry animal, put all your hairs up, trap warm air and you stay warm. But, um, but if you're a human, it's not very functional because uh, you know, your hair doesn't really keep you warm. But you're probably wearing clothes anyway. Why do some people have curly hair and why do others have straight hair? Well, it's actually you're asking two questions. What is the function of curly or straight hair? And that's about showing off to other people. It's, it's like um, animals with, with beautiful coats or birds with beautiful feathers. It, it's about being attractive to other people. But what is it that actually makes curly hair curly? Well, hair is made of protein, a bit like muscle, a bit like uh, bits of your bones, a bit like ligaments and tendons and fingernails. And if the protein has a slightly different structure, then some of it will curl up and some of it will remain straight. Well, I must say, Zahn, that is an amazingly intelligent, thoughtful and bizarre set of questions from our wonderful Operation Arch fans, isn't it? Some very intelligent people out there. Thank you for sending them in and keep watching Operation Arch. Bye!